Neil, in trying to understand the relationship between the brain and the mind, and is there something beyond the brain that makes the mind, this classic uh, question, you look for areas of the brain that are, that are a little unusual. Tell me about synesthesia, because I've heard that you are a synesthete. <laughs> uh, synesthesia is um, not very common, but not that rare either. People don't generally talk about it often. The common ones that, that people hear about are people who hear music and experience color. Or when they read, uh, they see color. Words have color or letters have color. And so it seems like senses are sort of mixing up. And one way to explain that is, oh, these people have crossed wires in their brain. And so <laughs> that's, you know, it's just a, a weird brain with crossed wires. Another so possibility. Numbers are examples. Somebody's, here's the number three, they'll see yellow. Exactly. Or five, they'll see red. Yeah, yeah. Um, or Beethoven is blue and Mozart is purple, <laughs> you know. Um, so one way to explain that is crossed wires in the brain. Another way to explain it is that consciousness is outside the brain, and the brain in channeling that consciousness into your specific mind um, is preserving some of the mix-up. Because you can argue that in, from the point of view of an infinite consciousness, there are no colors and numbers and sounds that are separate. And in fact, there's evidence to suggest that, that babies are actually synesthetic and they grow beyond it, separating out the senses as their brains uh, move. So it bears on the question of, is consciousness infinite and transduced by our brains like a radio turns uh, radio waves into music, or is it just funny wiring in the brain? I was at a conference, uh, a consciousness conference, where I was asked to talk about synesthesia in spiritual traditions because contemplatives sometimes have synesthetic experiences. It can be a feature of awakening or enlightenment experiences. And the woman who organized that, Maureen Seberg, has written uh, on synesthesia. She is a synesthete, has spectacular color and sound things going on. And after the meeting, she came up to me and she said, you know, synesthetes can recognize other synesthetes, like, like Adar. And I'm like, really? And she goes, yeah, and you're a synesthete. I said, no, I'm not. And she said, yes, you are. And she started asking me about color and music and sound and taste and flavor and stuff like that. See, I'm not a synesthete. And then she asked me about how I experience time. And she's, I said, oh, well, you know, time is sort of like this big wheel around me. <laughs> And that's how I think of calendars. It's sort of like it's in space around me. She said, really? And how about days, years? I said, well, bigger wheels, smaller wheels. I have to figure out which size of the wheel it is. And if you tell me 2.30, everything sort of rotates to give me a sense of 2.30 on Tuesday. And she said, that's synesthesia. Um, it's a time sequence synesthesia. And I'm like, that's not a synesthesia. That's just the, you know, the way things work. She goes, of course, you think so, but you're a synesthete. And it turns out that I've got this... I thought it was just like what everyone does for time, but I have a sense of time and space around me. Um, it's not space-time. <laughs> it's just that time has location. It even has shadings of color on a grayscale, um, which doesn't necessarily correspond I mean, to night try, and day. Try to describe it, because it, it's not easy to appreciate. Okay, so you if you tell me Tuesday, yeah. um, the, the, the seven days of the week wheel which is sort of out here somewhere. I can't, yeah. I get a little nauseated if I try to describe it too much. It's like car sickness. Sort of rotates in and Tuesday lines up. And then if you say Tuesday at 2.30, what I'm experiencing is the 24-hour wheel and 2.30 sort of comes into view. Um, if you tell me in 1923, then the big century wheel rotates into place. And do you really like feel it or see it? Or I feel see, it. Do you see numbers or, or do, do you no, see No, no. Just... Uh, no, I think I impose numbers on it, oh, but that's not what I'm sensing. What uh -huh. I'm sensing is simply movement. the movement and its location in space. But, but you're able to uh, uh, articulate uh, specific places, so it'll help you keep appointments from what I've read. Well, well yeah, I mean, yeah. No, I, mean, it, 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 <laughs> I realize that it's the more complicated my life gets, I'm finding it's really not up to the task. But, but in general, yeah, I'm, I don't need, I don't keep a calendar because I just know where it's located. Um, yeah, and people will go, you know, I'm jealous of synesthetes who, you know, Maureen says to me, uh, the, the synesthete who told me about this, uh, she says, oh, I like hearing you laugh because when you laugh, there are silver sparkles coming out of your mouth. And I'm like, 
I want to do that. All I've got is this time thing going on. And she's like, no, I think your time thing is so cool. I wish I could experience that. I mean, ultimately, it's just I don't think about it unless someone asks me. Mm. That's why I didn't know it was there. And, but you experience it, is this randomly or all the time? When, when this has always that? been how I experience time. And when I was a little kid and interested in everything, this was one of the things that interested me. But I never explored it too much. I certainly never asked anyone. It seemed like a silly question. Um, how do you experience time? <laughs> um, but if I tried, there were times where I tried to sort of like, could I draw time? And when I started to do that, I would get this sense of nausea. And I think because part of my synesthesia is the time sense with the vestibular sense, the part of your brain that tells you where you are in space, that when it's off kilter, gives you motion sickness. Right. So I never explore too much because I kind of get nauseous if I think about it too hard. And you do think that this has, uh, it could have a deeper meaning, that 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 reflection is of a, of a deeper reality, of a panpsychic reality, that you're drawing on some, some, some conscious... Uh, Milieu that everything is kind of blended together out there, and that that you and that would and when you are transducing this this integrated consciousness, you're just less efficiently. Um, uh, 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 you're still maintaining some of that original uh, uh, um, cross relationships. Possibly, I mean that's really at the edge of my speculation, and maybe a little beyond the edge of my speculation. But we know from Einstein that time and space are not separate, that they are intimately related. Am I experiencing some quality of space-time? Well, I don't think it would be so concrete as these this wheel-like experience, but maybe that's something I superimposed on it as I became a two- or three-year-old. I needed to tidy it up a little bit. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty cool to think about. It, it's, it's certainly an interesting phenomenon, but the parsimonious answer, the simple answer, seems to be that, you know, there's a tiny bit of miswiring. We all have some kind of miswiring. Sure. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, there's no yeah. perfect example. Yeah. I, mean, I, I can't carry a tune. You know. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, but it's a fun miswire to have, and it's, in my case, it's useful. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know that that definitively says panpsychism is correct or the brain creates consciousness. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that people who have deep meditation experiences often experience synesthesias. If they're experiencing a more fundamental property of mind, is that why that's happening? But I don't know the answer to that. Well, it could also be people who have too much to drink or, or take drugs can have the same experience. And they can. I mean, there are plenty of people who have done mushrooms or LSD who report synesthetic experiences opening the doors of perception, perhaps, or maybe just screwing their brain up a little.